I said I was going to do a video about the Instagram post I made about uh, being and becoming and what that sort of meant. And, and I gave a really quick uh, overview of that. Um, so let me get let me get right to it here. It's 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 hard to. I don't want to sound like the one of those guys that says, you know, uh, I can't teach it to you. You have to just know it because that sounds elitist. Like I know something and you don't know it and I can't. You just got to go find it yourself. But some of these things are along those lines where I can just point you at it. And then you got to you got to you got to experience it. So if I could take you in the gym by the scruff and get you in there and uh, let you experience this, that'd be a lot easier for me than me trying to tell you this. So I'm going to give you two books to look up. One is Eckhart Tolle, T-O-L-L-E, The Power of Now. It's a junior varsity version of mindfulness. It's sort of new agey. Um, he writes very simplistic. Uh, super easy to understand though, and he repeats himself a lot. And it's a really good thing, even though even if you're advanced, to just get get back into this simplicity of it, the, the bare bones of it. And he does that real well. And yeah, I think he's a Western guy, so that helps too. Um, no scary Eastern stuff. And then the other one that um, I think is is worth reading is. Thick Not Han, T H I C H N H A T H A N H. He's Vietnamese, and um, he's where I really started sinking my teeth into it. And his two books, I, I put them together because they're companion books for me. But one is called The Miracle of Mindfulness. I think that's a pretty popular one of his. It's the first one I read. The second one is called Peace is every step, like P-E-A-C-E, -E, like you find peace as you step along. So go back to those if you have any interest after I talk about this for a couple minutes. Uh, that's a good place to start to understand it. The, the idea that I was talking about was how we oftentimes, especially power lifters and people that are goal-driven, and I have that uh, disease myself, is to think about only the goal, to be tunnel vision on just that thing. And so I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example that Thich Nhat Hanh gave in one of those two books. I can't remember which one. He says that if you are not present, if you are not being here now, I think Ram Dass said that in the 60s, but, but it's, 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 it's what this is all about, being present for your life as it's happening. So he says, if you're washing the dishes and, and your mind is not on washing the dishes, but it's thinking about the cup of tea that you're going to enjoy after you get done washing these damn dishes, then you're missing your life because your life is the reality of it is here. And you are washing dishes. And if you separate yourself from that, and you spend the time washing dishes, not paying attention to washing dishes, and missing the reality of your life, but thinking about the tea, you're living in a fantasy. Plain and simple. You're living in an imaginary world in your mind while your real life is passing by and you're not really truly experiencing it. You're washing the dishes. You're getting them probably pretty clean but you're not washing dishes you're somewhere else and that's not always bad that's a good skill to have sometimes when you're doing something really shitty i had to muck out stalls because i had a pony <laughs> and, and horses and and i didn't like doing that and so i i went somewhere else while i was mucking out horse shit so it's not a horrible thing to do but i wasn't living my real life because it wasn't all that great what if you are doing something that you want to experience in the now, but you're always going somewhere else? And he says also, if you, if you go back and you remember something, you're washing dishes or you're mucking out a stall, 
or you're doing hot tar roofing or something like that, that's not all that fun, but that's your reality. That's your real life. And you think about something that happened that was wonderful in the past. You have a great memory that you want to do this horrible thing, but you you want to you want to leave here and go to and bring up something from your past. That that memory is also not real. It exists only in your head. It's not a real thing. And you can spend your reality and your now thinking about things from the past, and that sometimes is also good. It's great to remember some person or experience you had from the past and it was good for you and it's good not to lose those memories and a good time to to do this living in the past living in the future not living in the is when you're in pain or you got the flu or you're doing something really horrible but what about when you're doing something that you want to experience um he talks about eating a peach you know he says when you eat a peach really eat a peach. And if you're not practiced in living the moment, if you're always going to the past or like power lifters or goal driven people, always living in where I want to be, not where I am and not what's taking me, making me become, becoming what I want to be. But I'm always already there in my head, jumped ahead. And you want to eat this peach. You're not practiced at it. And so you may just consume the peach. You must just eat the peach. The goal of eating a peach should not always be just to get the calories and the fructose. I did a lot of eating like that, and, and that's okay too. And that's a different story. I'm sure you're probably aware of that. But when we want to enjoy a peach and savor the moment and savor the thing, what we're talking about is being here now, being in your present, living the peach life, the life of eating a peach not having eaten a peach, not being uh, fed, but feeding, becoming fed, becoming nourished, not being nourished. The process of becoming, living your life now, step by step. We're always moving. We're always becoming. And so he says, you know, take a bite. Chew the bite. Feel the peach in your mouth. There's different parts to the peach. I did this with donuts, <laughs> believe it or not. And the jelly donut has many different textures. The icing, the dough, the outside of the dough that's crispy, that's fried, the inside that's fluffy, and of course the jelly. There's different textures when you take a bite of a donut. I wasn't know I don't know that I was completely aware of that before I did this, before I started doing things like this. I ate the donut and it tasted good, and I I, I sort of tasted the icing and I sort of tasted the dough and I sort of tasted the jelly and sort of, but I sort of just ate it. I didn't experience the eating of it. And so you, you put the peach in your mouth and you feel the textures and you taste the different parts of the, the skin and the fuzz and, and the peach meat itself. And, and there's different textures in, in the peach itself next to the pit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you chew it. And then you blow air out your nose to smell it. And, and you swallow it and you feel it feeding you. And then you take another bite. You don't just get through it and get the peach done and throw the pit away. If you really want to live your life and that the time your life consists of eating a peach. So to whet your appetite more for this, becoming, instead of just Thinking about being, getting there, getting done, and having the thing. Accomplishing the goal. I, I know all about that. Don't You don't have to remind me about how to be <laughs> goal-driven and, and focused on just one thing. To the exclusion of other things. I'm already real good at that. What I want to get better at, what, what I think matters more, is as we're going to where we want to be, the process of becoming. I want to whet your appetite for taking the goal that you want so badly that is important to you. I'm not arguing that it's not important. It should be. But can we, can we hold that in the back of our mind and connect it 
back to where we are today. So if you want to lift X amount of pounds, and this is how many pounds you can lift, today you've got to work out. And so if you bring this attitude of becoming, not being here or being there, like it's a, like it's a quantum step, but it's a ramp. Like when you walk up a set of stairs, you're either on the first step, the second step, or the third step. You can't be at the third and a half step or third and three quarter step. You've got to go all the way to the fourth step. It's quantum. It's a jump. It's a jump. It's a jump. But a ramp's not like that at all. A ramp's a continuous becoming of higher. It's not a stepwise progression. It's a smooth, gradual becoming of up, higher. And if you can connect the goal that you want with what you're doing today, you don't have to wait for all that satisfaction and joy that you think you're going to have when you reach that goal because rarely is it what you expected. Never, almost, almost never is it better than you expected. Almost never is it what you expected. And almost always it's a little less than you thought it would be. And that's why we go for something else because that's the nature of that. But if you can connect that thing you want to the thing you're doing now and the thing you're going to do tomorrow and the thing that you're that is going to get you to where you want to be, that, that is going to take you where you want to go. And you don't have to wait for the satisfaction quite as long. You can be satisfied that you took one little inch or two off your journey or maybe a mile off your journey. I don't know. But everything that moves you closer should connect you to that. And a lot of people that they think that what, what here's where I am today, but this is where I want to be. And I, don't even, I hate where I am today. I don't even want to think about that. I just want to think about where I want to be. I just want to have muscles. I just want to, I just want to get the results. And they go in the gym. And, and I did this a lot. I, so I, I know a guy that, that's guilty of this. I didn't really experience my workout, which is to say, I wasn't really living my life. I was in the gym pumping away, doing what I had to do, right? And I got to where I wanted to go, but I missed the experience. Of becoming. I, I, I even missed a lot of being where I was and then jumped to the next thing. That's another story. But what this is about is, is about going to the gym and realizing that the things that you're doing right now are getting you to the place that you want to go. They are making you become, you are becoming closer to the thing. You're becoming more of the thing you want. As you get stronger, you're getting and becoming as strong as you need to be. And if you can connect that, you don't have to be so dissatisfied all the time that you're not where you want to be. And you can be very satisfied that you are becoming what you want to be. You are making yourself the thing you want to be. So that's a lot of talk, and, and I already admitted that I, I, can, I can show you the experience way easier in the gym than I can tell you about it. But I hope you're curious. I hope you're curious enough to at least say, what's this guy talking about? I'm going to the gym, and I'm going to see if I can connect what I'm doing today with the end goal of where I want to be. How does that possibly work? How can I feel that? How can I be, how can I be in the process of living my life fully being present with this workout and not being all the way mentally to where I want to go? I can just be here and know that I'm getting closer. I'm becoming what I want to be. And if you can do that, your workouts get pretty rewarding, even when you're not there yet. They don't satisfy you fully. You don't lose your drive because you took a step closer to where you want to be. Exactly the opposite. If you keep withholding this satisfaction and saying, I'm only going to be happy when I get there. Why not be happy with getting closer to there and closer to there? 
with all confidence, I can tell you that if you experience the becoming, you become more and more motivated. And that thing is like a snowball going down a hill. You, you, you feel the closeness of your goal. You're almost there. Even when you're way down here, you're, you, you know you're reaching. You're getting. You're becoming. And you connect to that. And it doesn't seem so far off and distant and hard to get. And every time you go in the gym, you can sense or experience a closeness to that goal that was closer than the last time you worked out. If your training program is good. So all I can hope for is that this doesn't explain it at all. And I know that. And I know that I can't explain it well. The books don't explain it well. They do better than I did here, though. But what I'm just hoping is that you get motivated or curious about this whole thing. And then you go out and look into it more. Read the books. See if you can figure something out on your own with your own instincts about what this might mean to be at the workout. And every time you are in your head and you're thinking about after the workout or something that happened to go, bring yourself back to now. Be right here, right now, with whatever you're doing. And the more things you do in that manner, the fuller and richer and deeper and more joyous your life will become. Because even when you're doing something that's just not wonderful, it's better than a fantasy. It's better than a dream. It's better than a vapor or a mist or a shadow. It's real. And because of its realness, it has richness. So that's a lot of talk and that's a lot of um, maybe BS. You know, maybe I'm full of shit. I don't know. A lot of people, I didn't, I didn't come up with these ideas. I just described to them and I think they're super valuable. And I wish somebody had said what I'm saying to you, to me, a long time ago. So that's the best I can do. And I hope that it was confusing enough or entertaining enough or made you curious enough to pursue it. Uh, so thanks for listening to that.